you know, I listen to new dudes and I listen to their songs if it's good songs, but I've never been um I never been a fan of the braggadocious rapper. You get me? You know what, man, when Cash Money first came in, they did a lot of flossing. I thought that was kind of cool because it was almost comical the way they did it. Like, you know, like Manny Fresh would talk about I got an aquarium in the dash of my car. You know, it was just so over the top. It was funny almost, right? You know what I'm saying? But them niggas would go out and do it. That's the type of crazy yeah, but, And that's what I'm saying. It was like, that was like almost a part of their gimmick. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm the number one stunner. I'm the stunner man. You know what I'm saying? I'm the stunner on niggas. And that was kind of like his thing, dog. But then, you know, hip hop come from the ghetto, man. And it's always gonna be represented. You know, that's what it's hip hop come from the struggle. Yeah, it came from. It the came struggle. from. It came from, like you know, it was our voice. It was our voice when we didn't have you know, um, as a youth in those times, the seventies and the early eighties. You know, um, we, we wasn't. We wasn't on no. You know. Uh, uh, Who's my role model, and I want to be like Mike, and you know, and and Martin Luther had a dream, and all that shit. nigga. We was figuring out how to make bread and and stay and survive and run down neighborhoods and buildings and poverty. So hip hop was the voice. You get me? Mm -hmm. It was it was the struggle music for us. We didn't have to listen to you know our parents' music. The blues and shit like that. We had our own lane. Niggas started rapping about what we was feeling. Exactly. You know, uh, drug dealers everywhere. Niggas, yeah. niggas don't care. Nigga, I'm Melly Mel with the message. And you know what I'm saying? We had songs that represented, nigga, we in the struggle right now. Yeah, and I don't want to sound like one of them old men that's like, oh, what was me, the little kids making this type of music. Now, it's just that. I think if people not careful, they can almost take themselves out the loop of reality. Because the stuff they talking about really ain't reality for the average person living in this country. It's maybe only maybe 1% of the people in this country, or maybe 0.5% of the country that's actually living like that. You feel what I'm saying? Uh -huh. Oh, no, definitely not. I think um, it's a rapper's job, so to speak, to always kind of put um, two on the team because they have an image to portray. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? Do you really think Ross is walking around all day, every day with big jewels on and glasses on with a perfectly lined up beard? No, those are photo opportunities. You definitely. Feel you feel what I'm saying? It's like, and... Everybody, if they're not watching their coin, they better watch their coin right now because the American dollar is taking the nosedive. And I think, you know, when they talk about um, everybody can't be living in no $50 million crib, I, I just know that the economics of music don't allow for that. The way streaming is, you have to stream for You have to stream a lot of units. And I know Ross, for example, got a lot of outside businesses outside of rap. But even then, how many of those are just sponsorship opportunities versus him actually owning something? And that's not me getting this business because Rose got way more paper than I do. But I think everybody capping, everybody not billionaires, though. Mm, I've never been one to count pockets. Yeah, I'm not into um, that either. But I just think I um, know. Um, asking this question, yeah. I know uh, firsthand uh, being an artist, dealing with companies and contracts, everything ain't what it seems. Mm -hmm. Um but again, you know, imagery is everything. Yeah, image is another um, A lot of shit is rented, leased. A lot of shit is, like you said, favors and loans. Um, but, you know, when you put yourself in that position, uh, forgetting that you can be normal, now you have to... Uh, Keep up with the Joneses. They, you know, that's what they say. So, yeah, and the um, fans won't allow you to be normal. You got to think about this, eight, like we talked about this before. You can be normal. Fans don't want to see you normal, dog. Yeah, you can be normal if you present your. They, they, they accept J Cole normal. He don't ride around with, you know, you don't see motherfucker jumping out of of 
Bentley trucks and Rolls Royces and the entourages and the 30 chains on. And you could be yeah, normal. Yeah, but J. Cole ain't living on top of the liquor store on 2nd Street either. Fans don't want to, if they see him in that light, they go clown him. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, but you don't have to, you don't have to become a successful artist off the struggle. Once you become successful, you should remember where you came from. You shouldn't turn around and, okay, today I'm talking about how I'm struggling and hustling to survive, and then I go out and because a, a lot of fans identify with what I'm coming from, so I sell two, three, four million records. Now I want to walk around in Versace shirts and big chains on and then alienate the mother who put me in this position. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, just, I, I'm just not cool with that. You can be normal if you want to. Kendrick ain't riding around with big chains on and jumping out of mother 30 Rolls Royces. He got a gang of money. He's yeah, done a gang, a gang of shows. Yeah. But I could be normal. You can be normal. But if you choose to put yourself in the, nigga, I'm finna jump off private planes and, nigga, I'm finna pull up with, nigga, I got all my, every nigga that hang around, I got 10 cars in my driveway, so now I'm gonna call up 10 of my homies and I'm gonna get them each keys and we're gonna drive all through downtown and floss to go jump out at the sneaker store, you know what I'm saying? Like, it, it's, you you put yourself in that position. I would imagine that Dot riding right here, Dot. You know, you my homeboy, dog. Me and Aiden need you to come up here and sit with us, dog. Because I got a lot of a lot of shit to talk that I want to talk to you about. Kendrick ain't fucking. Kendrick like, boy, leave me alone. <laughs> no, I'm that's not, my homeboy. I, 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 he, Kendrick is my homie, too. That's I, my guy right there. He did there. some work. He might f around and come, though, dog. He might f around and come. Not that type of dude. You, 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 you better off asking Michael Jackson to pull up. <laughs> I, I, I don't know Michael Jackson, but I know mother... That's nigga, my nigga right there. Yeah, but niggas get in certain niggas get in certain statuses, and they like I said, sometimes you know what? Though? Sometimes you can put yourself, you can become something to where it don't even allow me to do that anymore. Well, no, I will tell you this. That's what I was gonna say. Doc, if he had the opportune time, he would do it. But I don't think he could come over here and do it. No, it's probably it so much security. You, you probably have to have so much different stuff in place because he's a mega superstar now. Yeah, you got to pull. Be just you going might, you got to pull up like the president. Yeah, you got to exactly. have an entourage and you got to have security and niggas got to check the street out and top of the buildings and all that. So sometimes when you become so big, uh, it doesn't allow you to do the oh, normal for sure. shit. But still, you can still be, my, my nigga is still normal. A lot of people might think he's, you know, different. But to me, he's a normal nigga. He's not the one who feels like, um, I got to impress the public now. You get me? Um, now I have to go out and pull up in the $2 million car. Because I put myself in that position. Why? Because I started rapping about this. Because I started telling niggas, nigga, I'm bringing in 20 kilos, and nigga, I'm the man, and nigga, I'm having lunch in Paris, and then whoop de whoop. Now I expect it. I better not see your mother ass pulling up in no Honda Civic and shit like that, because you put yourself in that position. Yeah. If you want to be normal, you can be normal. You know who always did a good job of keeping stuff normal, dog? I would see you different places at your height. I would never necessarily just run up to you and talk to you all the time, but I would see you places, right? I would also see Warren G in regular places a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, around long, like at the grocery store. I, was, right. I used to bump in him. I think he might have been living in that little community in Lakewood at that time. Mm -hmm. I would always see him in the grocery store because I was li I lived right around the corner from there. So I would always bump into him. And I think that's why he got the love in the community that he did get because he was accessible. Yeah. This is when he was a mega superstar. This is when Regulate was out. You know what I mean? Like people would be surprised. Like... They'll see me in the in the in the grocery store, or they'll see me at the cleaners or some regular. Shit. Like, you really in the yeah? Like, okay. Like I had to tell him off the other day. Uh, how I'm gonna get that then? Mm -hmm. I don't have no motherfucker.
going to the store shopping for me most people buying <laughs> and buying my cases of water and, and juices and most people don't bro like and one for like you be cooking i'm like how the f is my kid gonna eat if i don't cook like I'm I'm a normal person outside of what you might go, oh man, this nigga been in movies and he got records, he been on a video game and all. Outside of that, I try to stay grounded and normal. Um it it, it can f with you if you've come from nothing and all of a sudden, you know, a nigga handing you a check for a million dollars and you know and you're able to do, you know, shit. Now, I can go to the mall right now and buy 20 pair of shoes. Or I can go buy my mama a car. Or, it's nigga, just, we could know, go we go sit down at the fancy restaurant and spend a thousand, two thousand. Public perception is um, something else. Like, I remember when um, Kendrick's little sister had a birthday. And I guess he brought her a Nissan or something. Everybody in the comment section was like, oh, you such a bad brother. You didn't go out and buy her a Bentley. You didn't go out and right. buy her this. It's like, that's a nice present. You know, a girl graduates in high school, get a Nissan? Man, I mean, please. that's the shit. Yes, hell and yeah. This sister probably was happy as a as norm, it. As a, norm, as a normal motherfucker, a person's come up and like, here, here's a motherfucking Honda, or here's a Nissan, or here's a, hell yeah. Last I looked, those pretty decent cars. Brand new, and nigga, I can get from A to B, and, and still don't have to worry about, you know what I'm saying, asking motherfuckers for rides, or catching public transportation. That that's, but see, I can see that as a motherfucker wanting to. Let me. I gotta keep you grounded. You get me? Because if I start stepping out of the element, then everything gonna be. Next thing you know, I'm gonna bend and ran through a hundred million dollars on crazy. Yeah, you have to be really because what, you have to understand from the fan standpoint. They think everybody got mega money, especially, and you know what's funny, the podcast stuff starting to get in that same category. I pretty much know what everybody getting, right? And some of these numbers just be just way out to just, because there's no way for them companies to recoup that money. How? They would have to sell a gang. It would have to be ads running. They're dropping every two minutes. You feel what I mean? Mm -hmm. You would have reads dropping every two minutes. It just don't work like that. But to the fans, they believe everything that they hear so I get people, I get certain family members tell me, why don't you buy you a new car? When you go buy you a new car, mm. it don't matter. Now, now, it don't matter, A, that my kids driving whatever they driving, and my wife driving whatever she driving. They just see me in my truck and be like, oh, he need to go buy him. But why should I? Because they feel like, um... Like, why do I have to buy a new car to appease them? Because you're putting yourself in the celebrity category. And now that you're a celebrity, you can't be normal. You can't be normal. You can't be just, you know, you're the Gangster Chronicles dude. So why would you want to be riding around in the old truck when you can go rent you a Benz or a BMW or lease you a fancy, you know, car? Because that's the image that people feel you're supposed to represent. Don't you think it's just more safer to be a homeowner? To be a guy that owns property, to be a guy that owns other little ancillary businesses and that's, stuff. That's not. Don't you just think that's more mature? Because the thing is. But this most likely are people, though. You get me? You can say that about, you know, uh, not to say all, all black pe people don't have that train of thought. But at some, at some particular age brackets, it's, it's like, no, nigga. What do you mean? Buy a home and, and stocks and all that shit. You know, now some people are try to, you know, yeah, that's the smart thing to do, whatever. But come on, the typical mother 18 to 30, you get in, motherfucker, you supposed to live, nigga, where's the, where's the Louis Vuitton shoes and the bag? You got to think about it, though, like this. I'm pretty sure, me and you was talking earlier, you don't have every car possible. I don't drove 550s, dog. I've had the 550s. I've had the Escalade with the... $30,000 kits on them, dog. You of know course you can. I, 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 you can't resist sometimes. I've had all that stuff. You know where all that stuff is now, dog? Gone. Because it wasn't worth it. It wasn't worth it. Like, once you get to the economics of this stuff, you ever notice when you trade a car in, man, you be like, man, I paid damn near 100000 for that, man. I only mm -hmm. got $20,000 back for it. It's just the, it, it, economically, it don't make sense. And I think that just comes with maturity. Um... 
uh, uh, like they say, if you, it, it's it's nothing if you got it. But um, I think once you get a certain age, you start feeling uh, to be conservative and to be smart is probably uh, a better way of thinking. Yeah, we got to be conservative um, because the thing is, one thing is by the dog, father time is undefeated. And like I said, I, I don't um, – I don't like to judge motherfuckers for their choices because I was in the same position. You get me? I, like I said, when you come out of struggling in poverty and yeah, you, you get that. your first opportunity to make some money. Yeah, you go stuck. And, and you are, and you are a young man or young female and, you know, you 19, 20, 21 years old and the motherfucker come hand you a couple of hundred thousand. Of course, you know, if you haven't already had the teachings and the trainings of, of, of economics and how to manage money and the long run, you get me? Uh, let's think 20 years down the road of, of what's going to be. And so you, you, think dif you would think differently probably. Man, I'm but tell you something, there's though. not too many uh, of us at 19, 20 years old coming up out of the hood who had economic training other than selling dope, you feel me?